Hey Libra, welcome to your love and romance reading for May 2022. This is for Libra Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. We're going to see what's coming up for you guys in love and romance for the month ahead. You might stumble upon this video after May. You might stumble upon this video some other year. <laughs> it's fine. You're going to find it whenever you're meant to find it. Whenever it's time for you to hear the messages that are in it. Keep in mind, it is a general reading for the collective. Not every single message will resonate, but take what does and leave what doesn't. Let's see what's going on here for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. <clears throat> we have the Nine of Wands. So, this card can come up in relation to timing. Sometimes when we're wondering how long is it going to take or when is something going to happen. Nine of Wands can come up to say you're almost there. You're like, you know, 10 is complete, 10 is done, you're at 9, right? So this is not the time you want to give up. When you've been through 9 out of 10, you don't want to give up at 9. So sometimes 9 comes up to tell us that we're right on the verge, we're right at the threshold of uh, something coming to fruition. So uh, something you're waiting on in your love life or some level you're wanting to reach, Nine of Wands can come up to say you are almost there. Now, this can also come up in terms of like boundaries or uh, making choices or decisions what we're going to allow or who we're going to let in. So some of you Libras maybe are wondering like, is this person worth my time? Should I give this person a chance? Or somebody's really pursuing me and I, I don't know if I should give them a chance or I don't know if I should let them in. Nine of Wands can sometimes come in when we're scared to give something a chance or we're, we're kind of like on the, we're kind of like on, on the defense here. So Nine of Wands traditionally in a lot of the tarot decks it's this guy he's standing in a field and he's got a bandage around his head a bandage around his arm he's been hurt but every single one of those wands belonged to somebody who came at him who challenged him who tried to fight him and the nine of wands basically is saying that you won every single battle right out of 10 big life battles, you've already won nine of them. Sure, you may have gotten hurt along the way, but you're still alert. You're still standing. You still have a lot of strength. You still have a lot of fight left in you. And every one of those previous battles gave you strength and gave you tools and wisdom. So nine of wands wants you to know, my dears, there's absolutely positively nothing new under the sun that anybody can come at you with. Every lie, every manipulation, every dirty little trick, you've seen it. You've already been there, you've already done that. So the Nine of Wands says, as long as you're paying attention to red flags, as long as you're allowing your experiences to remind you and guide you, you're not gonna make the wrong decision. You're not going to make the wrong choice. Because if you see those red flags, you can nip it in the bud right away instead of ending up in a 15-year-long entanglement, right? Sometimes that happens. You don't have to be worried about getting your heart broken. You don't have to be worried about trusting the wrong person because you have that boundary and you're observing it. You're watching for the signs. And if you see the signs that tell you cut bait and run, you're going to cut bait and run. So you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be scared. You can trust in your decision making. If you are dealing with someone with a sense of where maybe there's been this ongoing uh, back and forth, like you're in a relationship and you guys all can't seem to uh, see eye to eye on a situation or they're trying to push you or they're trying to budge you uh, into doing what they want you to do, Nine of Wands can be encouraging you uh, to stand your ground. Now, you don't have to fight. You don't have to argue. It doesn't have to be dramatic. But just simply standing your ground um, can bring this to a peaceful resolution or you not feeling like you have to give up something you don't want to give up or you not having to, uh, you know, 
uh, do something you don't want to do. The next card that's coming up here for Libra is the Four of Wands. And the Four of Wands is a card that a lot of times we see as marriage, right? A wedding. And so some of you may be manifesting marriage. You may be manifesting a, a, a wedding, right? Um, you're wondering, when is it going to happen? When is it going to get there? Well, Nine of Wands says almost, and we have the Four of Wands coming up, so it could be happening even within the month of May. Maybe not getting married in the month of May, unless you're running off and eloping, uh, but you know, maybe getting officially engaged, beginning to plan a wedding or setting a date. Some of you can be manifesting legal marriage. Sometimes the Four of Wands comes up for me in a love reading to give the person confirmation that not only is there love for you in the future, but there's actually marriage, right? Like getting married. And maybe for some of you, that is some kind of a, a important aspect of the relationship. Maybe you feel like it's not official unless we're married. Or maybe you're concerned that, well, you know, I'm getting older and there might be health issues or there may be certain emergencies that might come up and I need to know I have a spouse who's uh, going to watch my back or who's going to be able to uh, fight for me if I'm not able to speak for myself, you know. Uh, there might be things like this that some of you are, are concerned about. And so some of you may be manifesting marriage or having your eyes set specifically on marriage, right? Not just living with somebody, not just, you know, a long-term companion. But for some of you, marriage might be becoming something that you feel like it's important. It's an important step. I need to be at this level, right? Some of you may be thinking this. Um, with this four of wands, there could also be something here where you are taking somebody back home or your partner is taking you back home. I do feel like an element of travel here. There may be some differences in culture for some of you in this relationship, and that's taking me back to the nine of wands. I feel like that's the biggest obstacle here for some of you. And maybe, maybe, you, maybe you all are from the same country. Maybe you all grew up in the same country, but maybe this person has a different ethnic background than you do or they may have grown up in a different uh, community in a different uh, mentality you know it could it could be an issue of politics for some of you maybe one of you is very conservative and grew up very conservative and the other one of you is very liberal and grew up very liberal it could be religious differences but there could be something here where I feel it's it's coming to me as like a difference in culture. And I feel like that's the biggest challenge for a lot of you in this relationship or this new love for some of you that's coming in, for those of you who are single. There's a difference in mentality. There's a difference in like what is acceptable and what isn't acceptable. Uh, if you are taking somebody back home to your friends and family there might be things that you have to sit down and explain to them like hey you know don't get offended at this or don't do this or don't do that you might have to really spell it out for them or they might be sitting you down and they might be telling you look you know you can't do this around my family and maybe you might be tempted to to be like oh really i can't oh what's gonna happen if i do maybe you're kind of tempted to to push the envelope or maybe you feel like well i can help them i can enlighten them and i can get them to you know break out of this thinking uh don't <laughs> don't because if you do i feel like this will be over like over over to the point where this person won't even talk to you anymore right? So don't run that risk. Maybe it's tempting to push the envelope, or maybe you feel like genuinely, sincerely, well, that's kind of a silly idea, or that's kind of a silly belief. I'm going to help them break out of it. I'm going to kind of help open up their eyes. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Because the person that you're with might um, understand that and might be open-minded, but if they feel like you just went in there and you insulted everybody that they love and care about, they're not going to, they're going to be done, done, done. They're not going to tolerate anything that comes across as disrespectful uh, to their family. 
and they're not going to be with anybody who disrespects their family. And I want to emphasize something here because some of you get really salty in the comments. Some of you get very angry and very offended and you tell me that I'm toxic and I'm telling you to do bad toxic stuff. I don't mean that this family is going to be mean to you and you have to sit there and take it. That's not what I'm saying. Different cultures have different or different backgrounds have different things that are acceptable and that aren't acceptable. And so it's just a matter of being respectful with that crowd that you're in. This person is not trying to change you forever. This person is not telling you that, hey, when we're together and when we're married, you have to do things according to my culture. They're not telling you that. But when you're around their friends and their family, especially older ones like parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, the older generations, they're not going to tolerate disrespect. That doesn't mean that you have to sit there and you have to be disrespected. That's not what I'm saying. And I really need to clarify that. But this is really important for some of you Libras. The next card that's coming up here for you all is the Prince of Swords. And so here we have... This is kind of confirming for me issues of communication. Prince of Swords or Page of Swords can sometimes be somebody who speaks very directly, right? Maybe you just say something like it is and you don't think about it. And those words can come off as very harsh or very cutting. So be cautious with how you're communicating. Be cautious. Like you might be right. You might be saying something truthful. But is it advantageous in this situation? Is it worth the headache that it's going to cause? Is it worth a potential breakup? Like, for example, maybe in this person's culture, uh, they have a uh, tendency uh, to do something like, um, if, if their child is bringing somebody home, uh, that person has to like help prepare a meal or something, right? Something very small or something very trivial as like a way of like being welcomed into the family or like demonstrating respect for the family. Now, you preparing a meal with the family has absolutely zero impact on what the relationship is going to be like. It doesn't mean you're going to be a good partner or a bad partner or that you all are going to love each other anymore, right? And maybe you don't feel like preparing a meal. Maybe you think it's a stupid tradition. You're like, well, that's not going to change anything. And you should judge me based on my character. You should judge me on who I am as a person, right? And so you might try to come in with like logic or reason why this is silly, right? Me preparing a meal doesn't mean that I'm going to be uh, a, a good partner, or a, a good, you know, support to, to, to your child or, or a breadwinner or whatever. It doesn't have any at all significance on the relationship. It's silly, right? It's, it's a silly thing to judge me on. You might be very truthful in that. That's the truth. But in this case, it's going to come off as very argumentative. And is it worth it? Like, do you care about the person enough to just be like, okay, fine, Right. This is how your friend and family are. OK, I can I can I can play along for a day. I can play along for a couple of hours. You know, whereas a part of you might be like, well, this is stupid and this is silly and this is out of date and this doesn't make sense. And, you know, superstition isn't real. And and you might be coming in with logic and you might be coming in with facts. But is it more important for you to bring that to the table and lose the relationship or just, you know, just kind of amuse them? Just indulge them for a couple of hours. You, you, some of you are having to, to weigh that out. Page of Swords can also be gathering information. Okay? So some of you maybe need to be cautious what you're posting online or what you're putting there on the internet. Some things maybe are being perceived as negative. And some of you might say, I don't care. I'm done. Like, I'm done already. I don't want this person that's fine. This might not be your reading. You might want to check out your moon sign, your rising sign, your Venus sign, and one of those might resonate more for you. But for those of you that you feel like this is a special person, this is the kind of person you don't come across too often, or there's things about this person where they have a high sense of integrity, or they have like high values, high morals, and I really 
uh, I'm appreciative of that. And this is going to be something hard to find with somebody else. You know, then this might be your reading. Okay. And you might have to ask yourself, you know, are there some adjustments I'm willing to make uh, for the sake of having uh, peace in the relationship or peace with the family? And again, I don't feel like this is someone who's expecting you to change your whole entire life or to do their culture or to do their religion. But as I said, it's just there's certain things. You know, maybe if you have their friends and their like, not their friends, but their family on your social media, maybe their parent is sending you a friend request or something. Maybe you want to set your settings to where they can't see certain stuff that you're posting because they're not going to get it. They're not going to understand it. Your partner gets it. Your partner is not making an issue about it. But their parents or their older family members might not get it. And so they might be sending you social media friend requests. They may be trying to get into like knowing you in your personal life. And it takes two seconds to go in and just kind of adjust your settings and say, oh, you know, father-in-law, mom-in-law don't need to be seeing those pictures from Halloween. You know, it takes two seconds to be able to adjust those settings. You don't have to change who you are, but just find a happy medium here find a happy compromise here the next card that's coming up here for you all is the strength card and this is a major arcana card so some of you could be dealing with a leo okay if you have a leo placement there can be big changes or big shifts happening for you in those areas of your life that might be positively influencing or positively impacting your love life um, now, the strength card is a major arcana card. So the, anytime the major arcana cards come up, um, we're going to have uh, a significant soulmate, right? Or in a love reading, or we're coming into a new chapter in our life. It's a, it's a defining moment. So this is not just any old willy-nilly relationship. This is not just some any old willy-nilly little partnership. Like there's substance here. And the basis of it is loyalty, right? The strength card, yes, it's called strength, but there's a strong sense of loyalty and commitment to this card. So this is someone who's going to have your back. This is someone who's going to come in and defend you and protect you and look out for you and vice versa. And there might just be certain expectations um, or requirements from that person uh, on their end. Like, I'm going to defend you and I'm going to protect you and I'm going to stand up for you because that's what I do with the people that I love. But that also goes for my family or my friends. And so you need to, you know, know that if I feel they're being disrespected, I'm going to stand up for them too. I feel like this is someone that you guys are dealing with who uh, really wants to be fair really wants things to be equal. This is somebody who hates double standards. This is somebody very honest, very ethical, very hardworking, and they will fight for you like to the end. But they're like this with everybody that they love. So they just want everything to be peaceful. They want everyone to be respectful to each other. They want everybody to get along. You know, this isn't somebody who's going to tolerate um, any kind of drama or any kind of uh, like stirring the pot. And maybe you don't mean to stir the pot, but there might be certain things they're seeing as stirring the pot. Some of you Libras might have been dealing with a person for a while. And I'm just going to be very honest here. This could be somebody you've been dealing with for a while. Maybe you guys are already dating for, for like a year or something, or you've been uh, getting to know each other for quite some time. And maybe now you all are deciding that you're going to go next level, right? Maybe you all are talking about getting engaged or getting married or having a family or uh, moving, retiring, going off grid together, whatever it might be. You might be planning something next level. And I'm just going to say something. And again, I know some of you are, are going to come at me in the comments and tell me that I'm being negative and that's just fine. I can't help what's coming in. It just might not be your reading and that's okay. You don't have to get upset if it's not your reading. But I feel here for some of you, this is someone that once you guys do start talking 
about the next level, like the next step, they're going to get very real with you. And they might say, look, Libra, you know, I just kind of started out with you, just kind of seeing where things go. I didn't know how long we were going to be talking. I didn't know if anything was going to develop. You know, I've been burned really bad in the past. I've had people make me all kinds of promises and tell me all kinds of things. And then they, you know, ghost me or they abandon me. So over time, I've just learned not to take a lot of things seriously. So I didn't really like think that you were going to be serious with me. Or I, I didn't really, like think that you were thinking of anything serious. I've just been looking at this as I enjoy spending time with you. I enjoy our friendship. I, I, I enjoy our romance. But if we're going to do this for real, like if we're going to be together and we're going to take those next steps, these are things that are really important to me. These are things that I really need from my partner. So it might be where you're having to get to know this person on a new level and ask yourself, am I cool with that? Do I want to be with this person? Do I feel like their expectations are too high? Do I feel like they're asking too much of me? Do I feel like um, it's worth my time or worth my while? Okay. Do I feel like it's worth my time or worth my while? That's the question you're going to have to ask yourself. But for some of you, I feel like you may have been dealing with this person for quite some time. If you haven't been dating, maybe they've been in your life and you all have been friends for a long time. And now it's coming to like taking that next step. And they're going to be very honest with you about what they're what they're looking for. I will also say something else, Libra. I do feel like this is someone that um, is going to choose their battles wisely. But the things that they're telling you, like they might have certain things that are non-negotiable. And I feel like they they mean that. They They mean that. But at the same time, you need to be true to you. At the same time, you don't want to give up too much of yourself. So this might be where you all are going to have to communicate and find balance. And maybe find a way where you can merge these things to, together. Because I feel like there's a strong past life connection here. But your life experiences um, or your, your life paths have been very different in this life. And that's coming in and that's affecting the situation. So there's going to have to be a lot of communication here between the two of you to figure out how you're wanting to move forward, how you're wanting to do this. I also feel, Libra, for some of you, this is a very independent person. And that might be kind of taking some use to for you, getting used to. This is someone who's used to doing everything by themselves. They're not going to ask you for help. They're going to be busy doing their own thing. And if you are busy or you want time to yourself, they're going to be totally cool with that. They're going to keep themselves busy in the meantime. They're, they have their own things going on. And for some of you, you've been wanting this. Like, oh man, I, w I just want somebody who's not so clingy or I want somebody who's not so codependent. Well, guess what? This person is not clingy and this person is not codependent. And that might kind of make you feel a little bit vulnerable or that might kind of make you feel, wait a minute now, you know, do they care about me? I, I feel that this relationship can be a very happy, very solid one with someone who is very like home oriented has your back, looks out for you, uh, can come in and like take care of you and be there for you. Uh, but there's there's communication here. Like you guys have to communicate because there's some real differences in uh, in your view of the world and in your priorities. And that's not to say the relationship can't work. It can because of the soul connection here. <clears throat> but there needs to be, there needs to be communication and there needs to be like, you know, uh, hearing each other out. Okay. You might want to check out your moon sign, your rising sign, your, your, your Venus sign. Sometimes those might resonate more than your sun sign. 
again, this might not be your reading because it seems like a very specific type of situation. That's fine. Check out your other placements. I thank you all for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. You may need a private reading, which I'm more than happy to do for you. If you go to calendly.com slash amethystangelite, there's a link in the description of the video that will take you to the scheduling page. There's also a link that will take you to the Calendly part to schedule uh, to book with me in the tarot reading course that I'm teaching. Those of you who are interested in signing up for that. And don't forget the weekly forecasts and the daily messages on this channel as well. I thank you all for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. Take care, my dears. Be well.